Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models, Design of Experiments. And this is a little mini-series that I'm doing within that playlist called Estimability. And this is the fourth of four videos. And here we're going to look at generating estimable functions. Up until now, we've studied the necessary and sufficient conditions. We've developed a unique unbiased estimator for that estimable function. And we've also proved that it's a blue, the best linear unbiased estimator. And here we're going to look at how to generate estimable functions. So theorem one first, well, the model first. So it's y equals x beta plus error. Mean is zero. Constant variance sigma squared. Covariance is zero. X is NP. And X is rank R, which is less than P. Now for the model above, let this function be estimable if and only if this criteria happens where of course the dash is a generalized inverse so you take this matrix multiply it by lambda and if you get lambda back then that's estimable and that's pretty cool that's an easy check to see if something's estimable so let's prove it let's go this way so let's assume that lambda beta is estimable then by theorem 2, we know that this equation holds for some u. Now, let's since we've assumed it's estimable, let's show that this is true. So you take that lambda, multiply it by this. But by theorem 2, lambda is u transpose x transpose x. So we put that in right here. Now this piece here, x, x transpose x, generalized inverse, x transpose is m. And m is a perpendicular projection matrix under the column space of x. So mx is just x. But this was lambda, according to theorem 2. So we do get lambda back if, uh, if it's estimable. Now let's go back the other way. Let's assume this is true and show that it's estimable. Now, how do you show something's estimable? It means that you there's an unbiased linear combination of the y's that equals lambda transpose beta. That's the definition of estimability. So that's what we need to show. So let's assume this piece is true, which is the second half of the theorem. Now let's look at the expected value of this. Now, we're going to use a special row, this row, in here. So now this becomes, you know, the expected value goes in and it goes to the y. Expected value of y is x beta. But now let's plug in this row and we get this. But we're assuming this is true. So all of this is equal to lambda. And so it is true. So we have an unbiased linear combination of the y's for this estimable or this function. So it is estimable. And we've proved the theorem. Now, a couple notes is if this is true. So we multiply this matrix times lambda and get lambda back, then this is estimable. And since it's estimable, we can plug in the least squares estimate for this, and then we have a blue. It's, it's estimable with this blue. Now where beta tilde is the least squares estimate. Now, is there a way to just generate estimable functions? And the answer is yes. And I say that because theorem seven, that's the last theorem we'll do in this little mini series, it is so intriguing to me how this works. So intriguing. I find it pretty fascinating, actually. So for the model above, let V be any P by 1 vector. Any. Then lambda prime beta, where lambda is this, is estimable. Also, the blue of lambda prime beta is v times beta tilde, where beta tilde is the least squares estimate of beta, 
and v is this any vector we wanted and also the variance of this uh, um, blue is defined like this you know sigma squared v prime x prime x generalized inverse v prime this is so fascinating to me now it turns out and we didn't prove this that you can have at most r linear independent estimable functions because that's the rank of the matrix now so the most independent combinations we can have is r of them and one way to generate those is let v be a column of the identity matrix the p by p identity matrix and then just use each column once and that generates p um, estimable functions but now you know p minus r however you know however extra there are aren't going to make sense you you'll get like the zero vector and to estimate zero you use zero so it's technically estimable but it doesn't make sense and so you can remove those and then what's left over is the r independent linear combination so now let's prove it First, we want to use theorem 6, which says if we take the lambda times this, and if we get lambda back, then that combination of lambda prime beta is estimable. So what we do is stick in the proposed lambda, which is this right here. So it's any p by 1 vector times this. Now this piece over here is this, you know, the extra matrix that we're multiplying by but since it's a generalized inverse this is x prime x those just get carried over well this was what we're calling lambda v you know this and so it is estimable which you know means by theorem six this linear combination is estimable now let's look at the blue and the blue the best linear unbiased estimator for that estimable function is you stick in the least squares estimate right here. So let's look at that. So for lambda, that's this piece here. You know, v is any vector. And then this is the least squares estimate. Now this piece in here, since it's a generalized inverse of a symmetric matrix, we get the generalized inverse back. But then this is the least squares estimate for beta. So the least squares estimate for lambda prime beta tilde is v prime beta tilde. And to me, that's just so fascinating. And for this matrix product, I have a video called Generalized Inverse of a Symmetric Matrix, if you want to see that in more detail. Now, the variance of lambda prime beta tilde is we expand. So lambda is this piece here. The least squares estimate is here. And this inner piece reduces to uh, x prime x dash, or you know, the inverse, because it's a symmetric matrix, so we get this. Now to take the variance, this piece comes out front and it's transposed out back, and we get this, and then that's the variance of y. So the sigma squared comes out front, the i kind of goes away in that matrix product, and we get this. Now this piece here, since x prime x is a, is a symmetric matrix, this reduces to just this, this generalized inverse. And again, see this matrix for more, or this video for more detail. And that's the variance, and that's what we are trying to prove. Now let's do an example. Continues from the previous example. We have. Uh, an effects model so there's two groups two observations per group this is the design matrix this is the beta matrix if you know putting it in matrix form x transpose x is this the generalized inverse is this a generalized inverse and then this matrix product is this so now let's do an example let v1 be 1 1 1 and now i did pick that random but as i look at it it's all one so how random could it be now, then we take that, make the vector that I just generated randomly, post multiply it by this, and we get 2, 1, 1. So that tells me that 2, 1, 1 beta, which is this, 
is 100% estimable and it has a variance of sigma squared after you do this multiplication right here. Now, the question is mu estimable. And to get mu, it's 100 zero zero times beta. And that's that lambda, right? So let's use theorem 6. Let's post multiply this lambda times this matrix, right? We did the math already, so that's this. That generates 0, 0, 0, which is not our original lambda back of 1, 0, 0. So it is not estimable. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.